The New York Knicks will look to start another winning streak as they begin a four-game West Coast swing Thursday night in Sacramento. So joining me to talk some Knicks hoops is one of the co-hosts of Knicks Fan TV. That is Alex Torres. Alex, how's it going, man? Good, Dexter. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing well. I know for Knicks fans, the vibes are good. They've won 9 out of 10. And Alex, as you know, the Knicks, they open up this trip against the Kings. Both teams have taken two of the largest offensive jumps in the NBA this season. New York, they're fifth in points per possession. They were 23rd last season. In Sacramento, they went from 24th last season to first in the league today. So for the Knicks, what is working for them on the offensive end this season? You know, Dexter, it's three things for the Knicks. It's being efficient with their shot selection and isolation. It's also second chance opportunities and becoming a better three-point shooting team. I'm going to start with the isolation first because Knicks, they're seventh in the league right now when it comes to points per possession and isolation scoring uh, with the Nets leading right now uh, being first. And when you look, go down the line and see what they do, it's just between Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle and how they're able to, you know, get the switch uh, on opposing defenses and really just get to their spots in the mid range, finish around the rim or even for, for Randall and Brunson, it's just shooting uh, great from beyond behind the arc. You know, as of right now, Randall is in the 69th percentile in isolation scoring while Brunson is in the 90th. So when you have those two type of guys shooting like that, it's just, they're just unstoppable. And with second chance opportunities, right? You got Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein who are, some of the best offensive rebounding bigs in the league. I mean, Mitch is second in the league right now, averaging about, um, well, I don't have it right with me right now, but Mitch is averaging, uh, he, oh, sorry, he's 4.2 rebounds per possession on offensive rebounds in the league right now, with uh, Hartenstein averaging 2.7 offensive rebounds as well. So with Mitch being second, Isaiah Hartenstein being 18th, that definitely helps for the Knicks with second chance opportunities. And the Knicks on the season rank second in the the league right behind the Houston Rockets with 16.7 points per game. And then the last thing is three point shooting. You know, you have um, the Knicks who right before, right up until they played the Boston Celtics from January 1st, they were 11th in the league when it comes to shooting from behind the arc. But after this game, they dropped back down to 15th. Um, but it's been great from where they started so the season because from the start of the season up into December 31st, they were shooting 33.7%. From the perimeter now they're shooting 30 uh 36.9 percent so such a massive leap between in all those areas well in three-point shooting and with those strong showings in isolation scoring and second chance opportunities the knicks have just been able to be rolling on all cylinders yeah they have been rolling on all cylinders offensively alex and on this road trip after the kings the knicks see the blazers and then they see both la teams what are your expectations in terms of a record for the knicks as they head out west well, you know, Dexter, starting off this week, I thought it was going to be a 4-0 trip and uh, didn't go so well because, you know, as, as we saw, the Charlotte Hornets uh, came for the upset. Knicks were also a little tired after a double OT game against the Boston Celtics, and they didn't have Jalen Brunson. But I expected the Knicks to finish up going uh, either 2-1 and or 3-0 and on this West Coast trip. You know, I'm looking at this Kings team, and they're not a good defensive team. They're in the bottom, and they're in the bottom when it comes to uh, points per possession allowed during the game. And then on top of that, you know, I'm also looking at the LA Clippers who've been five and seven since they last faced the Knicks. And even with adding Russell Westbrook uh, and even uh, Bones Highland, they still haven't been able to gel together as of yet. And then looking at the Lakers, you know, they don't have Ron James. So they're just trying to live with just Anthony Davis right now. And they've kind of been, even though the Knicks Lakers have been surging, I expect the Knicks to come back looking for revenge because it was a close game. You know, the Knicks didn't have Mitchell Robinson that game either. So I expect that one to be a good battle as well. All right. We'll see if those are all good games. The Knicks can come out with some wins on the West Coast. But let's start with the game Thursday night. Knicks versus Kings in Sacktown Thursday night. Late night for the Knicks fan TV crew. I know you're going to be up late there, Alex. What are the keys to the Knickerbockers <laughs> getting a win over the Kings? Um, man, you know, it's going to be a late night. We're going to have JD on the play by play. There's going to be a post game afterwards preview of the game. So we're all, we're all set for this, uh, for, for this game, but for, for the Knicks to, to really have a good chance against the Kings, they're going to have to figure out how to stop a high powered offense. Dexter, as you noted, they're first in the league when it comes to points per possession. So the Knicks are going to have to be better about guarding. And they have been, especially with the addition of Josh Hart and Emmanuel quickly off the bench. Those guys have been very versatile around the perimeter and only 
you know, strengthen what the Knicks have been doing on the season so far. And with Mitchell Robinson back being the rim protector, that should also help. Um, the other thing is to get RJ Barrett going early. You know, RJ has been struggling a little bit. And we've seen now that with Brunson out these past two games, RJ has been able to get to his spots early get going downhill so looking for him to begin and just so that way he can get into a rhythm when he goes in with the second unit once he starts that second quarter and then the last thing is just to continue to knock down threes you know the Knicks had a poor shooting performance against uh, the Charlotte Hornets which led to the upset but as long as the Knicks can be strong from shooting behind the arc it should open up everything else in the paint whether it's getting second chance opportunities for Mitchell Robinson or whether it's RJ Barrett Jalen Brunson hopefully Brunson plays and even Julius Randle when it comes to attacking the paint It'll be interesting to see the Knicks during their nine-game winning streak. We're shooting about 40% from downtown. We'll see if they can keep that up on the West Coast. That is Alex Torres of Knicks Fan TV. Alex, we look forward to the coverage that you guys will have during this West Coast trip, and I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it, Dexter. As always, have a good one.